The sun provides enormous energy for our planet. Its volume is 1,290,000 times that of the Earth. Its surface temperature is 5,500 degrees centigrade. The sun burns hydrogen to give us sunlight. Sunlight is used by plants on Earth to make food and produce oxygen. Two oxygen atoms join with four hydrogen atoms to form two water molecules. Water can be split into its atomic components, hydrogen and oxygen, by passing an electric current through it. Hydrogen is released to the negative electrode. Oxygen is released to the positive electrode. As a final product, hydrogen becomes hydrogen gas and oxygen becomes oxygen gas. HTL has developed a compact machine which produces high volumes of hydrogen and oxygen gas by splitting water. HTL's electrolyzer produces from water a combined mix of hydrogen and oxygen gas known as hydroxy gas. It is in the ratio of two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen. A 5-litre reservoir of water is used to fill the generator and can produce approximately 9,000 litres of gas. The hydroxy gas is produced on an as-need basis. Only 15 litres of gas are stored at any time. When passed through a focusing nozzle and ignited by a simple spark, the hydrogen and oxygen gases recombine to release heat energy in a powerful flame, while the atoms return to water molecules. The powerful flame is focused and can cut through a house brick. The majority of the minerals in the brick are melted. The temperature needed to melt the house brick is 1,700 degrees centigrade. A refractory brick requires 2,500 degrees centigrade. This powerful flame can be used to melt tungsten, which melts at 3,410 degrees centigrade. However, as you can see, our tungsten rod is not only melting, it is also vaporizing. The white smoke is vaporized tungsten. This is only known to happen at 6,000 degrees centigrade. You may recall our sun's surface temperature is 5,500 degrees centigrade. The flame released as the hydroxy gas goes to water in air is only 150 degrees centigrade and a hand may be passed through it quickly. This is not a recommended procedure and is only a demonstration. Mild and stainless steel up to two millimeters can be welded. This is a high-strength granular penetration where a strength up to 100,000 pounds per square inch has been achieved. Two pieces of aluminium can be fused together using common aluminium filter rod and flux. No carbon is formed, the properties of aluminium are not weakened and the weld is as strong as aluminium itself. Ceramics can also be welded together. This may have application in restoring large broken ceramic artefacts or in modifying or mending damaged ceramic pipes. This weld is used for sealing and is strong under compression but not tension. It is also possible to weld steel to ceramic. A hole is initially melted in the ceramic and a portion of the steel is then also melted as it is placed into the melted ceramic. This technique may be valuable in the building industry. Using compressed air, 20 millimeters of mild steel is cut. This multifunction unit operates without bottles, but compressed air is used to produce a plasma stream. Using compressed air, 3 millimeters of steel is cut and shaped. A unit which separates hydrogen and oxygen is now being tested and hydrogen used to produce a plasma stream is expected to cut much more efficiently. Again, no bottles are required, which means that one machine will have the ability to undertake DC arc 
which can weld up to 20 millimeters, plasma cutting, and gas production. Gas can be produced now at 1,770 liters per hour. If we burn liquid petroleum gas in air, we produce black smoke consisting of hydrocarbon emissions. The black smoke in the background is from acetylene only, with carbon particles filling the air. When the hydroxy is mixed with the acetylene, a partial carbonizing of the flame illustrates the unburnt acetylene at the center of the flame. As the hydroxy gas increases in volume, a neutral flame is achieved. The high temperature impeded the formation of large molecules characteristic of hazardous chemicals. A new electrolyzer incorporating a lightweight inverter is currently being built. It will measure approximately 100 by 40 by 40 centimeters. The electrolyzer will operate at a pressure of 50 pounds per square inch. We'll use 40 volts of direct current and draw 150 amps of electrical current. A 12 volt battery is connected to three cells which are of the type configured in the hydroxy machine prototype. The cells sit in a container of sodium hydroxide and water at a 20% ratio. It demonstrates the ability of the cells to produce hydroxy gas. Through the top holes of the insulation, hydroxy gas in vast quantities is pushed out of each cell, as liquid is drawn in from similar holes on the underside of the cells. HTL have produced a machine which effectively takes water as a feedstock for hydroxy gas manufacture and then returns the gas to water whilst focusing and utilizing the energy byproduct to perform all of these tasks. This unit is a major technological breakthrough. It will deliver sufficient hydrogen and oxygen gas to weld and or cut steel, aluminium, and ceramics. More importantly, it will do it at a cost which is a fraction of current welding and plasma cutting costs. Other applications include motor vehicle hydrogen conversion, eradication of general and toxic waste, hydrogen and or oxygen production systems, desalination of seawater, vacuum systems, mineral mining, cogeneration systems, production of cost-effective electrical power, materials treatment using high temperatures, and many others. So we started with water molecules. We split them into atoms, focused the energy, worked with it, and then we returned the atoms to water. Welcome to a new frontier in alternative energy application.